right, so the next things to do on this is to take apart the drum and clean it. As uh, you can see, hopefully, it is covered in a layer of grease, and that is preventing electricity from making it to the trip from the track to the motor. So I am going to move the camera a little bit and then get this taken apart. So there's two screws that hold this reversing mechanism onto the frame. One here and one there. So this is our DC relay on this side, which activates the solenoid over here, and that rotates the drum. Now in order to clean the drum, I have to get at it more easily, and by that I will have to remove this top um, plate that holds the fingers in place. So there's little tiny fingers that contact the drum, and it's held on with these metal tabs. They twist them in to lock it in place. I'm going to straighten them very carefully and then very gently pry up on the... Gently do one side at a time. You don't want to bend it too far so it will come off or break because these are old and quite fragile. And there's one side and the other. Yeah, so there's a lot of grime in here. So I'm going to take my preferred cleaning solution. Ideally, I would be able to get the drum all the way out, um, but the way this is designed, I don't think I'll be able to do that. Still, I have access to clean it from the top side. So I'll give it a cleaning and um, we'll see how it goes. And this is why you want to be very careful with these phenolic plastic material because when I was removing this side, the corner caught underneath the solenoid and I uh, clipped it to make it removable and the entire board split in half. Fortunately, I think I will be able to salvage it by just gluing it back together. Uh, you can see this was built possibly as a kit. There's a poor solder job on this finger. It uh, It's just balled up, so I will reflow the solder on there to make it a little bit better. For now, I'm just going to stick it like that. Um, these fingers are extremely delicate, so you m might be able to clean them gently by using the a fiberglass pencil and very gently rubbing them without bending them because they're so thin that if you bend them too much they will break and then they won't work at all. What I'm going to do now is remove the uh, positive lead from the tender frame and in order to get it to remove I'm going to add just a little bit of new solder that'll help the old solder melt and then just pull it away Oops. Um, a lot of these old locomotives were actually kit built and this wiring job, even though it's the factory wiring, it sure doesn't look very nicely done. Okay, so now that I have the wire removed, the entire tender frame is accessible and I will go over to the sink later and get this cleaned up. This will make it a whole lot easier I might even be able to stick this right in my ultrasonic cleaner and get some of the carbon and grime off these wheels. This is going to be the most essential part for it to operate smoothly is getting these pickup wheels clean because this is the only electrical pickup for the engine. Now that that is removed, I have access to the drum and I'm going to first take some cleaner and just gently go around and clean as much as I can.
Mineral Spirits would work good for this, or Goo Gone, as I like to use, works just as well. And it's removing the layer of carbon on there pretty easily. Uh, after that, I'm going to take Q-tips and go over it and then polish it bit by bit with the fiberglass pencil. I'm not sure exactly how well you can see this, but I polished half of the drum contacts and you can see the side on the right is a whole lot shinier than the side on the left. It's very tedious and time consuming, but the result is worth it for smooth operation of the reverse mechanism. I've also extremely gently polished these fingers and just the tops of them so that the electrical contact will be much smoother and got rid of some of the tarnish on it. So I was able to repair the uh, plate that holds the two fingers on by super gluing it back together and the super glue seems to adhere pretty well to that old phenolic material. I also sanded off the tarnish and uh, reflowed the solder on one of the um, soldering points. This wire, not sure how well you can see this, but I these old wires are also quite tarnished and so I just rubbed some sandpaper over it to get rid of some of the oxidization. That should help solder stick to it a lot easier. So then I will be able to tin this and the other one. I'm also adding a tiny piece of heat shrink on each one so, so that will keep the ends of the wires from the cloth from fraying any more than they are already. Because this cloth insulation you can actually slide back and forth. As you can see, hopefully this one is pretty tarnished, but I'm gonna try sanding this a little bit and then um, put some fresh solder on there to get it to stick back together. Once that's done, I'll be able to reassemble the reverse mechanism and then the next steps after that will be to clean the tender wheels and I will be able to put it together and test it. All right, so at this point I have the wiring repaired on this side and I have it set in place on its pins and um, you really have to have patience for this almost more patience than I have because if you it can be tempting to slam these down onto those pins and uh, because that material is so fragile don't do that it will break so you really really need to be very gentle when installing the phenolic board onto those pins actually this one is crooked because the way it glued together you can see the cloth wiring has been resoldered into place and heat shrink added to the ends of the wires and it looks pretty good i think so now i'm going to work on cleaning the wheels on the tender and that is extremely boring and tedious so i'm not going to record that but it is essential for smooth operation on the tracks once I am, when I come back, then I will work on putting the whole thing together and testing it. All right, at this point, I have the wheels cleaned on the tender and the reverse mechanism screwed back down onto the frame. Now I can apply power and nothing happens. Now this style of reverse mechanism uses a DC pulse to trigger this relay. Now I can mechanically activate it by pressing down on the top of it, which is the only way I can reverse it currently. So the DC relay activates the solenoid in the back. The solenoid in the back pulls the lever, which turns the drum, and the drum then changes the polarity of the field and rotor in the engine and changes the directions of the wheels. It's a four position, so every other position is neutral. So it goes forward, neutral, Reverse, neutral. Very interesting, complicated design, but then you have directional control on an AC powered locomotive. Let me show you this. This mechanical reverse mechanism is very similar to the ones used on the larger S scale locomotives. 
The biggest difference is the size, and this is one actually from a late 50s American Flyer locomotive. This one has the same drum on this end and the same uh, pickups or the uh, same fingers and everything. The difference is that the solenoid on this one is always powered. So it, and it changes based on whether it's on or off. So this one, the solenoid runs all the time when it changes the direction every time you add or remove power. But on the HO scale one, the solenoid is only live when the relay is activated. As is the nature of these, they tend to be very finicky, but so far this one is running pretty good. All right, the next things to do is to test this by taking it over to the track. Well, there you have it. I was having so much fun running this one around the layout, I almost forgot to stop it to film the conclusion here. Anyway, this is the second of the three pre-war American Flyer Gilbert H.O. Hudson locomotives that I am in progress of restoring. The third one is in progress as well, and you'll see that video after this. So this locomotive definitely has a lot of cosmetic damage. There's paint missing all over the place. The, the headlight lens is missing. The tender has warpage on it, on the shell. The pilot is broken off. Um, 
However, this one actually, after redoing the engine, is one of the, the quietest so far. It's actually quieter than the other one. And uh, I'm pretty happy with how this one turned out. So if you like this video, why don't you help me out with my channel and subscribe if you haven't already and leave me a like and a comment. And you can also check out my older videos. I actually have well over a hundred videos at this point on my channel. And as always, stay tuned for a new video every week or so right here on My Grandpa's Trains. And thanks for watching.